Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Anime on Draft. We're here again with episode 42, and we are me, the host today, Alec. I'm joined with my wonderful co-hosts who always remind me to say our names. Uh, Let's start with Mark. Hello. You almost got it there that time. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Drew. What is going on? And Rolando. Hello. So... Today, we've got um, a beer I've never had before, so I'm excited for that. Um, Rolando, you picked it this week, um, and it's the Hitachino Red Rice Ale. Um, Hi, cha cha cha. There you go. Red (laughs) Rice Ale. It is a Belgian Strong Pale Ale by Kiyuchi Kiyuchi Brewery, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, Yes. So, what made you choose this one? Um, My dude, I wanted to choose a beer that everyone could find at <clears throat> relative Yay. ease, and I also cannot get a six pack uh, because we're doing renovations at our place right now. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there's that. And I also wanted a beer that people could find chilled. Although, if you got it from Bevmo, it definitely is not chilled. Definitely not. not. Nope. It's definitely has no chill. It has that no chill. For sure. <clears throat> and I've also no had chill. it before and I like it. So, yeah. And it's good. Yeah. Never had it. So I'm excited. Uh, anyone know the ABV? 7% alcohol by volume. Mm-hmm. So, you know, above average, nothing super crazy. It's not like uh, Rolando when, we, when I was talking to you the other day and you're drinking that beer and it turned out to be 12%. Oh, yeah. The well, whatever. The high West barrel aged victory at sea from Ballast Point. Oh, right. So good. <laughs> I've never had it. That does sound really good, but so um, good. It's good. How about we hop right into our uh, uh <laughs> tasting of this beer and go ahead and give our first I'll impressions. Rice you to it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Uh, that was so punny. Uh, that was so punny. Oh god. So, right off the bat, it's the head is stuck around for a long time and it's got a really nice color. I like the color. Mm-hmm. I like it too. It's kind of like, different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's sort of cloudy, but it's like got like a nice caramel color, I guess. Yeah, like yeah, from caramel from amber what I can or see. something. Do oh. you guys have any uh, sediment at the bottom of yours? I can't see it. No, but it is very uh, bubbly. It's super carbonated, yeah. I got a little bit that of might be the bubbles at the bottom. Sediment. You know what? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I do see something. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Kind of malty scent. Mm-hmm. Mhm. Mhm. It's got a little. It bit smells of, good. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a, not like super sour, but it's got that sort of like off taste to it. But it's not off putting at all. I'm gonna give it a sipperino. Yeah, it's like a little bit sharp at the tongue, like very first taste, but it kind of mellows out. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sharp at the start. Taste alcohol. Good, interesting. That's not like crazy amounts. Interesting. Um, point, but did you know mm-hmm. that they claim that this is the w- one remaining red rice ale in the world? Though in the world, in the world, <laughs> in the oh, world. Shit. Wow, really? Did not know that. That's, That's pretty what cool. They yeah. say. Hmm. Hmm. Well, then they should keep making it. It fits a niche. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie; I'd never heard of that before, but it sounded cool <laughs> when I saw it when you you know posted it. So it's, it's definitely I like the owl. It's got kind of like that. Um, <clears throat> sw- it's not really sweet, but that, you know, different taste. Kind of like if you're drinking a, a Newcastle, not the not, not, not the, the bad, bad ones. ones, but, you know, the uh, regular Newcastle. And it's not really like, it has that sour kind of aspect to it, but it's not like really citrusy <laughs> at all either. It's just like. I don't know. It's not. It's not anything like I really ever had before. And it's, it's kind of got like that it's different, like similar aftertasty 
um, taste, I guess, <laughs> that if, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you drink sake, because taste. they're, you know, both, both rice made with rice. Yeah, I was going to say it has like at the at the very end, oh, that's, uh, the flavor is that, very sake. That's such a good way to describe it, because now that like you say rice. that, I I definitely see that like mm-hmm. super, super good. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what that taste was, too. I was like, it's, it's it tastes familiar. Like, I know this, but I couldn't put my finger on it. But it has that kind of like heavy kind of alcohol, like almost like. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. like a very alcohol smooth. taste. <laughs> I know. Yeah, um, it's, like, body. it's like a very like smooth tasting like alcohol. I don't know. It's it's different. I know. Um, I didn't say it was like Warms really citrusy body. or anything, but it's kind of got like that like sake or like that plum wine sort of taste. Like not quite a lambic, but something like in the middle there. I don't know. I feel like. So I looked up the color of what that valent, my bloody Valentine was supposed to look like. And I feel like this is the color that it, it should have been, but it wasn't. It was like darker. But I feel like that beer that we talked about last week, it should have been like this color, though. You know, I can't see the color. Unfortunately. <laughs> the mouthfeel of this is it's super like effervescent. It's like drinking airborne. <laughs> drinking airborne what you know when like you put the airborne it's like pss- oh because it's so bubbly yeah and oh, it's all bubbly yeah uh, i mean as for the, the color i guess it's got like a tinge of like red to it so i mean i guess i can see where you're coming from but <clears throat> i was still expecting like red red last week but yeah. i like this i like the color wanted blood if you red. want like red red then you should have the red velvet nitro from <clears throat> ballast point i have had that it's good did that, cut, that, did that so, kind of option? Did that come out this year? Because I didn't see it. I didn't see it this year. That makes me oh, really sad. I think they I had it there. Too. Well, I mean, they when obviously we went, had, they it, had it there. there. They, I mean, they always <laughs> had it there, but but yeah. the six packs. No, they didn't have. Them. Yeah, I think they just had the regular, makes, just the normal. Um, that was a really good beer, red velvet. Yeah, that one was good. Uh, so after we've had our first impressions, how about we get um, a little. I have a question for you guys and then we'll move into the rating. Um, what would you say is the best season for this beer? Like winter, spring, all the time, mm, yeah. I could, all day, I, every I could, day. I could say it's good anytime, but I would think mm. like spring or summer, you know, a, I was going to say spring, like a kind of the sun is out kind of weather. Mm-hmm. So I have a little story for you guys and Story okay. time I, can, story time. Uh, I can drink this anytime because this is a really good beer. But the first time I ever had this beer was at a ramen shop. And it was like a really, really good ramen shop. And it was like during the winter. And so I was like winter. eating warm ramen. And it was winter time. And I had this beer for the first time. And I'm like, this is like the best. You know, I, I'm, I'm eating. <laughs> I'm nice and warm from the ramen. I'm having this good beer. <laughs> so this beer reminds me of winter time specifically uh, for that reason. But uh like you guys are saying, I can kind of have it anytime. I can see where it would be like a good springtime beer because it's like a little bit refreshing because of the effervescence. Um, but I'll drink this. I mean, I'll drink any beer anytime. It doesn't matter. But. <laughs> I don't know why, but I I like this particularly because it is winter and it seems like a winter beer for me. But I definitely can see drinking it in spring and enjoying it in summer when it's hot out. You get all the bubbles and it's refreshing. Um but I don't know what it is. I think something about the flavor and it reminded me of sake. It kind of warms me up. And then that's just like, hmm, this would be cool if yeah, it were cold. Thinking about which that, it is right that now. warm sake heated up. That that special Alec uh, from <laughs> uh, the ramen place or from the sushi place. Just get that that bo- that big bottle and then that sake for like five bucks. Oh, yeah, Holy yeah. Five dollars. The that five dollar thing. Yeah, you get a <laughs> bottle of hot sake and a... 22 ounce bomber of uh i think it's Japanese they have a couple beer, beers yeah. yeah like sapporo and stuff but um, um i was also thinking this would uh pair well with a lot of foods but really heavy foods for me ramen. like uh okay, ham. Yeah. ramen ramen it would have Definitely. to be really rich flavors yeah, yeah i think otherwise it would just shit all over it mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. all over it mm-hmm. 
But I mean, um, I, yeah, I definitely agree with you. That's an odd expression to use when talking about food and beer. <laughs> but I definitely shitty. agree. <laughs> Get over heavy. it, Mark. <laughs> yeah. So get over it. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, get Fine. our ratings. How about we start with you, Rolando? What do you think? Yes. I mean, it's good. It's pretty simple and refreshing. So <clears throat> I'm going to give it a four. Right on. Solid. Uh, what about you, Drew? Um, I really like this beer. I like all the Hitachi no beers. I just wish they came in a six pack. None of them ever come in a six pack in America. Um, and I wish they're a little bit less expensive. So you get this little tiny bottle for like seven dollars. And if you go to a restaurant, it's like even more. It's like ten dollars. Um, <laughs> so be careful with that. Um, but I really like this beer. Um, I like the owl. All the Hitachi no beers has a little owl on it, so it's cool. Um, owl guy. I'm gonna go with uh, four point two five. Ooh, right on! I like it. 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 Oh, oh, oh! All right, Ooh. Mark. Ooh. How about you, <laughs> my dude? Uh, I like this too. This is a. It's it's different. It's it's, a, it's different kind of beer. I I enjoy it though. I like it's like the crisp. Um, Ooh, I don't know. Crisp. I also really enjoy that the head has just stayed perfectly white and smooth. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't get that in a lot of beers. So mm-hmm. mine dissipated a little, but it still has that nice color. Like it's it's a pretty thin layer, but it's like it's still like perfectly white. Chill in there. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna give this probably like a four point two five as well. I think it's, oh, it's solid beer. I enjoy this. <clears throat> I'm glad I got two. I don't know why I got two, but I did. <laughs> I'm so. happy that you got two. I'm happy. I got you. two as well. Actually, I got two because I was like, if it's good. I'll want to. If it's not good, oh well. I've drank an IPA. I recommend before, so trying I drink all, six of them. all the Hitachi no beers because they're all really good. The Bevmo uh, that I went to had two. I forgot what the other one was, but it's, um, it's their Belgian. The Belgian. Mm-hmm. They had a green green bottle, I think, on it. Oh, the green bottle the green is label. the espresso stout. The I think. Belgian oh. is the uh, is the blue bottle. Good. Yeah, is yeah. it blue? Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe I'm colorblind. I don't know, but um, there's a there's <laughs> definitely a bunch probably. Yeah, they're good. So Drink them. I'll go ahead and give my uh, rating. Uh, I'll be quick and to the point. Oh, man. Assuming four already. Um, <laughs> six. Uh, wow, a six. I think it's, I think it's good. Um, I'll the, give it a six out of five. For the same reasons everybody said, <laughs> I think I'm going to agree with the, uh, the majority here and also give it a 4.25. I think it's a solid beer. Definitely glad I bought two and I will buy again. Yeah. So nice. with that. Six packs. That's all I wish. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, but that six a, pack a would like be thirty dollars <laughs> six pack. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let me pick up this six pack, dude. That's that's thirty five dollars. You know, it's 30, imported twenty eight dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, worth Let's it. Let's do it. <laughs> worth it. Let's go drink it in Japan, Rolando. You can you can go. Yeah, we will. But you you can just buy six of them and then make your own six pack with a box. Yeah. <laughs> just get a actually box. they have little like, yeah. bevmo has little Mix cardboard six packs yeah. you can Mix get a cardboard match. six pack from uh from bevmo guys and no, just make dude, your own build your own Shout six pack oh bevmo. build your own literally your own. <laughs> really though uh, anyway, like a 42 dollar so six pack that's <laughs> yeah it'd be expensive yeah, shout out to bevmo. so let's go ahead and move on to the second part of our weekly pairing i know a couple of us are excited to talk about this episode um of mm. Violet Evergarden. Mm. Um, I had a lot of trouble finding this one um, because it just was hard to find. Uh, anyway, so I know, uh, Drew, you have a couple notes here. Yeah. Ooh, so notes. why don't we start with you? Um, you go over your, your little talking points here. And notes. Let's hear what you got to say. I wrote. I was able to write, guys. You can write. How can you write if you can't read, though? You can't read yet. I don't know. (laughs) It's a Christmas miracle. Platform. Platform. Um, So the couple things I wanted to talk about uh, in this episode of Violetto Eva Garden. Um, uh, The first, uh, basically, they're going to this observatory to help transcribe books, um, which sounds like a really lame job. Uh, But it helps Violet kind of have a kind of coming to terms with a new emotion and that emotion is loneliness. 
uh, when she's up on top of the observatory viewing the comet that only comes around like every 200 years, um, she finally kind of comes to terms or is able to understand loneliness a little bit better. She's talking um, to the person she's working with about um, how she misses the major and she feels empty without him. And if anything, if she found out that anything happened to him, she would just be crushed. And the guy goes like, yeah, that's loneliness, stupid. And she's like, she's like what? And then she starts looking at the comment and like doesn't even realize it. Um, so that was that was a cool point. She's, she's learning emotions uh, kind of one episode at a time here. And so that's, uh, that's good growth uh, for her as a character. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is when she's transcribing that first book about the comet, they, they talk about this whole lore about um, if anyone dies while the comet is in the air, basically they're kind of reborn into like a new vessel. Um, and it's like a, the greatest honor that you can have kind of in your lifetime. And that's kind of the process that uh, Violet is going through right now. She's this soldier and that's all she knows and she has no emotions and as she's coming of age and becoming like this doll and learning about these emotions she's sort of being reborn um into this kind of new shell or this new figure of a person um and it just kind of coincides that the comet is there as well so she's basically coming of age uh coming into uh herself and learning more about herself uh, not only, coming of emotions, <laughs> not only with this like uh, loneliness emotion, but she's learned other emotions through the previous episode, and she's becoming more human, basically. So that's that's kind of the points I want to talk about. I don't know how uh, you guys feel about uh, about that with this episode. Um, <clears throat> I I've seen half of it, so I'm not going to talk. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but thanks for the spoilers. Wow. Yeah, right on. <laughs> um, Rolanda, you said you said you wanted to talk about it too, though. So, what do you guys? What did you and Mark uh, okay. think about this episode and what Drew said? So, I kind of wanted to touch upon something that Mark and I talked about in the first shot we did of Violet Evergarden. And so, in that, we kind of the technical aspects. Yeah, we correct? talked about the technical Go aspects. It. Go listen to it if you haven't heard it. But one of the things that I personally wanted to see was more moving like moving tracking shots whether it's like panning through or like kind of emulating a like a jib or a dolly um like stuff that you could only that you normally see in film and television because it's a camera and mark i think you remember i said they probably don't like they can't do it unless they really utilize CG, right? Mm-hmm. And they did it at the end of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. Like they did exactly what I was, you know, kind of wanting from them, which is to kind of change up the the cinematography a bit from just always like these jump cuts or whatever i thought that face to face of characters like here's violet here's another character let's go back to violet like they have a lot of that yeah like but there's never Mm -hmm. really any in anime in general there's not really a lot of just moving shots or long shots that stay in like it's one scene and a long shot and they hardly ever don't cut because it's kind of hard to do what you can with a camera um, in animation, because obviously they're drawing it. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the fact that they implemented <clears throat> CG very well and were able to do some pan panning shots, um, tracking shots, it I was like, wow, this is exactly what I wanted them to do. And it changed things a bit. And I don't know, Mark, I don't know what you thought about it. I thought, no, are yeah, you, I mean, I are you talking about the scene that. where she's like going on the gondola? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And like when I saw that too, I was like, oh, like this is exactly like how it could happen. Is yes. like there's a lot of dialogue that happens in this series. So like it's so easy to have characters like make like small movements like they normally do and then just keep it on like the same shot and yes. have it just this long and like really interactive shot, but it's very stable. Like it's still like you're still in the scene. And it hasn't cut away to anything, but you're still having like all this like different action going, even though they're just kind of talking. 
Well, yeah. that was so I, I thought it was great. That was a really powerful scene too, because you know you kind of have two characters, uh, one guy kind of learning what he wants to do, <laughs> and he's like kind of basically coming to terms with that and shouting out to her as she's leaving, like. I've made up my mind. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do the thing that I've been kind of fearing my entire life. And it was you who kind of pushed me to do this. And not only, uh, not only am I going to do this, but hopefully I'm going to be able to see you while I do this as two separate travelers. And, you know, he kind of has that like thought process of just like that comet comes every 200 years. Um, what are the chances of me meeting up with you again? Um, while traveling and so it's like it's such a powerful and important scene not only for his development but for violet as well because she as she goes through her travels and learns and you know discovers emotion um discovers different character traits for herself um she's constantly growing and it's kind of limitless um and so yeah and then it like cuts to a close-up of her like smiling like with her whole face mm-hmm. like Whoa. like an actual like na- natural kind of smile as opposed to like those four <laughs> smiles that she's been doing <laughs> well a lot of a lot of times that they've been doing this in every episode and a lot of times where they show that violet is showing emotion they don't show it through her her full face they throw it they show it through a change in the way her eyes look like they'll do a mm-hmm. close up of her eyes or one eye or whatever and it'll it'll move and change shape and then it'll cut to the reverse shot of the other person's reaction to the face she's making mm-hmm. and that's how they've been doing it in like the previous episodes and so it's kind of like pointing at like hey look she she's showing emotion but we're not really explicitly showing it to you like we're kind of showing it through a different means, like through others. <clears throat> it's the kind when, of how she's growing yeah, in itself too. Definitely. And the way like, and she'll smile and she'll do things that show emotion. But I think like you said, Rolando, the biggest thing is in her eyes and the way they animate her eyes, they, they show so much emotion and you can tell even those kind of subtle differences uh, between the different emotions just through her eyes. Cause like a smile is a smile, but it, when she's like kind of dead panning you, she has like these dead looking eyes, <laughs> but when she's showing emotion, her eyes kind of glitter and sparkle. And there's a lot of different kinds of emotion that she portrays with them. And it's, it's really, really powerful. Cause like we've been saying, it shows like not only emotions of happiness, but kind of a culmination of like everything kind of thrown into one and you feel, you feel her emotion, which is really powerful. I, well, I'm pretty sure there's a phrase smile with your eyes. So yeah, they're doing it right. (laughs) I mean, like I, I thought this was probably the strongest episode so far. Just like they, they just in terms of execution and the story was done very well. I thought this was like probably the best directed episode so far. For sure. The, pa- the pacing was actually pretty good for this episode because I know the pacing has been off for a lot of these episodes, but it was actually, it felt, it felt good. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I felt the same way. Like I, I felt like I was, I was going to get tired of like the same format. Like Violet goes to a new town, meets somebody, she learns their backstory and then learns something from them. But I thought this episode was really well done and that like, you also experience like this growth from both characters, like and wasn't in like a new way that it wasn't like so blatant. Like um, episode four was, it was that was the one where she went to the town with the, with the other auto doll, right? Yeah. With Iris, mm-hmm. with Iris, yeah. I was gonna say Ivy. Yes. With Iris. <laughs> That's it wasn't different, as like blatant. <laughs> might not be so kind if she we'll, we'll get Ivy. an Ivy later. Probably. <laughs> She'd be a villain. <laughs> we, we've got Boogan B. Yes. So it's, Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i thought it wasn't as like blatantly like like this is how they're growing like they're, they're gonna get, they're gonna find out and like love like through iris but now it was like well it's very subtle almost and like i thought it was really really well done that like leon's character yes um, the, like the way that he grew in this episode it wasn't so like just automatic it was like he still kind of had these like like weird feelings and then like he ended up kind of like going in a different direction 
like well, more naturally. And they're both really similar characters too. They kind of have a similar backstory. They're both kind of orphans. They both have like right. terrible personalities. They don't have a lot of friends. And through meeting each other, they kind of, and we even hear this in like his opening monologue. He's like, before I had an unrational hate for these auto dolls. And by the end of it, we see that he kind of obviously grown to appreciate at least Violet um, Mm -hmm. and has like strong emotional connection with her. Um, But like I said, like they're both very similar characters. They both kind of have shitty personalities. Nobody really likes them. And, you know, Leon through Violet somehow um, learns, you know, that it's okay to like kind of open up, um, be yourself and reach for your dreams and do what you want to do, which is reach for the stars. And, when, and, and like we've all been saying too, like the pacing felt appropriate. It didn't feel like it was forced that he kind of came to this realization. It felt right. Even though it was one episode, uh, going over like four or five days, um, kind of jam packed into like a 22, 24 minute episode, but it felt, it felt good. It felt like it was okay for him to kind of have this realization uh, with the way that they showed the, the two characters' developments. Yeah. Also, it, we get to see Luculia again. Oh yeah, she she's does great. show up again. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. she's she's a friend. Both Leon and Luculia <laughs> are very strong side characters. That yeah. Kyoani does a very good job of implementing into the story and making you care about them. Yeah. yeah. But I think Agreed. I think the biggest takeaway from this episode, though, is when they're stargazing at Allie's comet. Leon says it's a once in a lifetime encounter. And I think that's kind of something to take away from it because every encounter is in, is in itself as a once in a lifetime encounter. And that's kind of how Violet's been growing throughout the series. Mm-hmm. And like it kind of puts the emphasis on everything has meaning. <clears throat> like in that particular case, they were highlighting Violet's encounter with Gilbert and how that's kind of led her to where she is today. And even this meeting with Leon in itself is an encounter that helped her, like you said, Drew, learn about that her, that deep feeling in her chest is loneliness. (laughs) And he almost says it that she loves Gilbert, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's interrupted. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll get that later. <laughs> Episode yeah, seven. Exactly. Well, going forward, too, it was that we we didn't really, well, we had no hints about what happened with uh, Bougainvillea, the Gilbert's brother, mm. Deep, Deep Freed. So that was something that I was like yeah. interested in seeing, but I'm actually not that upset that we didn't get anything, So, which I'm sure we'll get something later because in the next episode. she could... Well, I mean, she technically, she clearly doesn't know that he's, you know, dead. Dead, dead. Right. But then again, we t- technically don't really know if he's dead or not. Yeah, yeah. We just, Anime's, it's implied. Anime's done stranger things. I mean, <laughs> implied. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he was uh, missing some limbs. Yeah. Chilling there. Lots of, bl- lots of blood. <laughs> but then again, so was she. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. who knows? I mean, she's okay now. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe he's true. the first, uh. They have the person technology. with four with four cyborg. yeah he's a full cyborg <laughs> he's a full holy steampunk shit. cyborg <laughs> holy he's shit. basically darth vader he's anakin skywalker <laughs> oh god dude i hope he doesn't yeah have the except same he doesn't suit, have that beeping oh noise god. in his suit that <laughs> yeah. have that annoys problem. him every so often <laughs> <laughs> oh man well it looks like uh we've got some things to look forward to in episode seven and i need to watch the second half because yeah, i'm an it. idiot yeah get it now I'm excited to Dude. watch all these spoilers, Dude. but um, <laughs> let's uh, move on over to our happy hour. Um, so I actually wanted to ask you, Mark, if you are still watching a place further than the universe. Um, yeah, dude. I I actually really enjoy this series. Oh it's I was gonna so ask. much fun. Oh yeah, right. It's, it's so enjoyable. Like it's like it's not as like relaxing as like Yuru Camp, but it's no, it's a which good is solid series. It's a good show. Chill. I'm not as yeah. far as yeah. you guys, but I'm sorry to catch you. This latest episode uh, had me scared at a few points, um, just because of like their stupidity. <laughs> or like their naivety <laughs> but right. uh i still think it's funny like it's it's enjoyable like it's got its really good moments and it's 
it's cute, I guess. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like it, man. It's got a good mixture of like cute, funny moments and like heartfelt moments. Yeah, um, they do a good balance and it, it's not as it, it's not as like uh, crazy as Ancient Magus Bride or Violet Evergarden. Um, but it's definitely got substance to it. Um, I do remember when you were uh, a few weeks back, you were asking about the scene with the the other student and she's being a bitch. Uh, Megumi. Is that the na- the um, one who didn't go to Alaska or yeah yeah, yeah. wow Alaska Antarctica? yeah <laughs> going to Alaska no, <laughs> um, place. She, she was being a bitch but they did a good job of kind of like showing her side so that was kind of cool but she was being annoying um, yeah that was that was really annoying I want to find a gif of the um, the part where she tells her mom and <laughs> the dad just slams the door on her <laughs> that is probably like definitely my favorite moment in this series i need to find that gif or that video and it's just wow i haven't even seen those spoilers wow dude it's it's hilarious uh, i'm going to post it i'm not going to laugh on anymore on social medias post it on twitter oh you better laugh i'm not going to laugh anymore cuz you spoiled it oh no <laughs> Not that's even. the next episode that i'm going to see so i mean it's i'm spoiled already <laughs> Oh my Fuck. god! It's like me and Violet Evergarden. Yeah. God damn it! I think it's like Fuck. the second episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe like the third. I don't it, remember. It's it's definitely not. I've seen all of those. <laughs> I've seen one, two, and three. Okay, Mark. <laughs> well, it's it's uh, in there. I don't remember. It's somewhere. Just find it and post it on Twitter, Mark. Yeah, I'll post Serena. Sorry, it. social media manager, if you're listening. Please post this on Hello, Twitter. Social yeah, guys. Mark Hello. Just mentioned. Aging, social media manager, aging. where are you? Hello. Yeah, he's also slacking. Yeah, it's, we're... it's not out on WordPress yet. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. I just oh, uploaded it today. Oh, oh no. okay. I mean, the social media manager just uploaded it today. <laughs> oh, uploaded it. Oh, oh, he uploaded <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyway, so um, <laughs> let's move on to our, other, our next happy hour topic. Um, I wanted to talk about ancient magus's bride because we don't talk about it we don't have multi shots like we do in violet evergarden um so i actually i'm just gonna start out with you drew you've been talking yeah, a lot me. it's another one of those episodes yeah, me. yeah. but drew talks, you, a, lot, drew talks a lot part two, two. <laughs> yeah part yeah. two you've been asking for more development on like the evil guy and kind of the conflict there so what did you think of the small amount of development we got from uh about Cartophilus when he when uh, Chi says in like his dream or whatever. Well, I'm was glad, episode I'm glad that this episode like kind of starts it <clears throat> off, and I think now we're gonna kind of start moving towards like a more like end goal here of what's actually going on. Um, we have Cartophilus and um, Chi say being in his dream, and it seems like through his quest of eternal life uh, that he's suffering. Uh, he wants to go back to just being Joseph, but he can't. Uh, and we don't know why, and he's clearly suffering and dying internally or something like that because he's, like, in the dream, he's, like, bleeding from his eyes and missing an arm and all that good stuff. So there's some sort of internal conflict going on within his body uh, that only Chise is able to kind of see. Uh, so I'd be interested to see kind of how that develops. And then other than that, this episode was kind of plain. It was setting up some new uh, sorcerer characters uh, who are very annoying but kind of funny at the same time. Um, and then we get to our dragon auction and, uh, how Chise is able to kind of connect with the dragon and see like the suffering that is going on internally with him within the dragon. Um, so without talking too much, you know, I thought it was a good, uh, setup episode for what's to come in the future. And as I've been saying before, I'm curious to see, um, you know, the difference between like Cartophilus and Joseph and that internal struggle that uh, he's kind of going through. Right on. So you're you're getting into it more now. Yeah. No, I mean, I like the show. It's just, you know, I want a little bit more external conflict, and that's what we're kind of getting here. Right on. Um, so uh, the the character, I did a little research. Cartophilus is based off of a legend. It's not in the Bible, but it's, it's a legend. The wandering Jew, apparently it was a Roman soldier who was walking behind Jesus as he walked up to go get crucified. Joseph. And he hit Jesus and told him to go faster. Wait, did he hit Joseph? Wasn't oh, you're not talking about the guy that carry helps him carry the cross. Never mind. No, no, it's it's a Roman soldier who hits him and tells him go faster, basically. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And he goes, "Why do you tarry?" And then Jesus said, "You'll tarry until I return." 
and then he's basically cursed to walk the earth. Um, <clears throat> but I actually um, wanted to get your opinion, Rolando, about when he says, I'm not Cartophilus, I'm Joseph, and then he apologizes to Cartophilus and asks someone to save him. What did you think about what did that I think about it? With himself. Yeah. I mean, like, isn't that kind of tying in with the um the whole Jesus being crucified? Like the um whatchamacallit? The agony, suffering. the suffering. Yeah. Because like there's the man Joseph that helps him carry the cross, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is him. So he's clearly trying to say that he's yeah, not him. the guy that's you know essentially torturing Jesus and like forcing him to carry out his crucifixion. He's trying to say, Oh, I'm the guy that's helping you. I'm not the guy that's causing you causing suffering. I'm the one that's, um, helping you. And like, instead of being the victim, he's or like, instead of being the, being I the guess, executioner, the he's guy. the victim. Yeah. He's the victim. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought, I mean, I, I think there's like a lot of like, symbolism in general in this show it's not necessarily <clears throat> they do have a lot of christian symbolism which happens a lot in anime for some reason but it's <laughs> it's just like symbolism in general like me. they they pull from a lot of different <laughs> a lot of different um religions and mythologies so i thought that was pretty poignant in terms of his character because it's like are you supposed to feel sorry for him because he's causing all this suffering or are you supposed to i mean Sorry, are you supposed to despise him because he's causing all the suffering? Or are you supposed to feel sorry for him because he himself is suffering? Because he's kind of like right. that we in that weird paradoxical state where he's causing suffering because he is suffering. He's like essentially just a human, but yeah. not he doesn't know how it. else to cope with it. Mm -hmm. Except to really, you know, lash out on others. Cause what, chaos. Yeah. What what I kind of want to know, though, Alec and Mark mm -hmm. Drew, is, you know, we do get some sort of weird, that conversation between um, Elias and, what's his name, the sorcerer guy? Uh, Renfred. 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 I thought that was yeah, him. pretty juicy, this episode. Yeah, that yeah. was good, too. That was a good um, little conversation they had. It kind of... I, I want to see I wanted it to continue, but obviously they, <laughs> they're going to give us more later on. But I don't even know where it goes because the eighth book isn't out in English. Oh, so is this, up to, oh, is this up to where it's finished? Next episode is up to where the book finishes. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah. So interesting. I think what's going to happen is next episode will air and then the book will come out like a day after it airs or something like that. So I'm going to read it in a day <laughs> and and be ready for that because i want to read it because i read all the other stuff before watching it so but um so it's good it, continue they're following the uh the book pretty well um they left out a couple things that i just wanted to kind of mention it might be useful um so we have the the dragon which is like in the cage and, and tied up and um it kind of just evolves and starts breathing fire i don't know if they explained it before but in the manga they explained that dragons can basically evolve whenever they want and at like quickly or slowly um <clears throat> and yeah, so they did um when the dragon came to pick up chisei he said he kind of explained oh, right. it very briefly very briefly Ble and bleefly. said like briefly uh, he yeah. said that i wanted to grow big enough so you could ride me right <laughs> <Blue>. <laughs> So um, <laughs> but, yeah. they go into it a little bit in the book. And uh, the reason it can breathe fire is because the genetics for fire breathing dragons still exist, even though they're all extinct. So in its moment of stress, it evolved into a fire breathing dragon. And now cool. it's like the only one of its kind um, now. So that was kind of interesting having that little tidbit from the manga. I was but, also um, interested in... Um that comment that somebody made, I forget who said it, but um, they basically said that Chisa could hear him speaking. <clears throat> and so yeah, I she thought could that hear was his, like emotions. So I thought that whatever. was also kind of interesting in that the sense that she was able to connect with Joseph or Cartophilus. And I don't know if maybe she, this is like something to do with her power as well Is like, she's able to, you know, hear or speak to like other, other things more so than like the average like major you know sorcerer 
Mm-hmm. Like so a spiritual I, I don't connection know connection or something, or like magical connection. Sorry. Yeah, and I don't know if that has to do with her being a slave beggy or not, or if that's I'm actually if, something that's just she say you know has. I'm wondering if it's because she absorbs all the magic around her, and through like absorbing other people's magic, because like obviously the, all those people are emitting a lot of magic, especially the dragon, when she can hear his emotions and stuff. So I'm wondering if maybe it has something to do with like your there's certain amount of emotions or shit transferred through the magic that she's absorbing from all around because it also looked like she was like experiencing that like that sense of emotion that the dragon was feeling that like despair Mm -hmm. and just like rage well and even elias tells her he's like those are not your emotions don't kind of give in to them but she's just like fucking full-on bawling you know yeah And it's funny because she, when they first cut to her face and she's crying, she's just looking at him and she has this look on her face like she doesn't even know she's crying. Mm -hmm. And then she's just like, why do I feel like shit? Dude, Alec, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of that Mm. chick from ghost shows who just like starts like screaming and yelling. She's like, oh "Oh my God, God, the ghosts. Oh my God. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? I like this a little, I like this a little better than that. (laughs) No, but that's what it is, dude. That's exactly what it is. I'm not. Gonna, uh, I was gonna compare it to something completely different, but <laughs> go for it. Mark. No, go for it. I was gonna say this is like, and and this is kind of been done in like One Piece. So oh, I like that show I, too. I, I don't know. This is probably spoilers. So spoilers okay, if you're I'm not never caught up in it. One Piece. But um, like this is like the voice of all things type of thing, type of like I guess power that Jisei might have. Like she can hear. Like voices of, of like all these like different the mountain creatures and fairies and stuff like I don't know possibly Luffy has so I don't know maybe something along the same Luffy's lines. Luffy's also overpowered <laughs> as fuck, so you got to remember that. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> uh, and then I just had one more thing on this. The I like that they even though the episode was super dark, they still have pretty like comical moments here and there. Um, I liked the little bit between Chise and Elias where <clears throat> the, she's like, do you remember how it, how much it hurt when you did that to me? And then everyone's like, that? What did he do? Like, it, just, <laughs> it sounded like they were insinuating that, you know, they did the deed. She's a virgin. <laughs> oh, yeah. They so, made the whole innuendo. They mm-hmm. consummated. Yeah. So I was laughing about that. But um, Renfred's like. Switch when like as soon as he drank was pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just started <laughs> just to cry one drink. drink. He's like, "What <laughs> happened?" Yeah, he's like, "Oh God, he'll be like this for like four hours." Then he tries to leave. He's like, "You're not leaving. Drink with me." <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who the fuck voiced um, uh, Elias when he changed forms because it sounds <clears throat> a little bit. Too. It sounds a little bit like. Um, Mark's favorite female voice actress. Really? I, you know, I didn't even notice that. I, I noticed that one of the voices of the new characters was um, really not somebody pretty famous too. I cannot remember his name. Interesting. I don't know. I can't help you there. We'll figure but it out. In yeah, the we'll interest of time, out. let's go ahead and move on. I've got a question again for everyone. Um, So we've been having this kind of theme of random topics. And today's topic is the best first episode of an anime that you have seen. And I'll just go in order of how we have it here. That way, Rolando, you have some more time to think about it. (laughs) Drew, (laughs) go ahead. What's your favorite episode? We were talking talking about a bunch of them before we started here. Um, But I think uh, one of my favorites of recent times, maybe not of all time, but of kind of recent times is uh, No Game, No Life. Uh, It starts off with Sora and his little sister Shiro. And Shiro's like naked and they're playing games and they're real good at games. And then (laughs) all of a sudden they get transported into this like crazy fucked up uh, uh, world where being good at games is like means you're a god pretty much. Um, and so they kind of get thrown. Which is sick. Yeah, and so they kind of get thrown die there. thrown into that, and they and because they're so smart and so good at games, they like go from having literally <laughs> nothing in this world to being like basically the kings or the chief influencers <clears throat> of the humans uh, within that world. Um, so super super cool show. That's this is one of my favorite shows of like all time. Uh, no game, no life. So I recommend it. 
Um, but just going from like dominating MMOs on the internet to becoming gods of, uh, or not gods, but like rulers of a, a race within a world uh, is a pretty cool thing. Uh, and the visuals, the, the visuals within No Game are like super stunning, like <clears throat> magnificent. So, what? Excellent fan service. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. All, your other all, talking all points. Of <laughs> all of the above. All of the above. So, watch that yeah. show. <laughs> I, I agree. That's actually one of my um, favorite shows I've seen. It's really good. I wish there was more. <laughs> it was more source material. <clears throat> for Please. fuck's sake. <laughs> 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 what about you, Mark? Um, just real quick. So yes, Rolando, you are right. That was uh, Maya Sakamoto. <clears throat> oh, it was. Oh, he was right. Yep, you were correct. Got him. Um, so I think I this was like no doubt for me. Probably one of the best first episodes that I've seen is School Live or Gakko Garashi. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is an awesome and crazy twist of a series on that first episode. So if you have not watched it, please don't don't spoil don't it because it. it kind of ruins the rest I, of the season. Right, I, I, I won't spoil <laughs> it, but please go watch yeah. the first episode. You'll you'll be hooked, uh, and you'll I've at least watch it. a couple more. And, um, uh, it's definitely got a twist that you're kind of not really expecting unless you're like, I guess, all. trying to pay that, close attention. But even still, it, it kind of <laughs> blindsides you in that, a good way. That show actually has a very good example of uh, um, sound design in anime that is part like part of shaping the narrative of the story so you can, you you can listen oh. you can listen to the opening <clears throat> i've seen that one and expect one yeah. thing and then you get what you get and you're like fuck when when right. mark put and that, things will change to the next episode which <laughs> yeah. it, is crazy it's interesting when uh when mark put that on the list i was sad i didn't pick that but i didn't want to <laughs> steal his idea but that is that is one of like the <laughs> best kind of shocking twists that you'll ever see in anime i think i think for a first episode in particular yep i i just remembered i have seen that one it is definitely yeah, good i talked to you about <clears throat> that sound design moment alec was this a while yeah, ago? Yeah, yes, it was. A was while. this in my Was this in my phase where I? It just was in the phase where you spam <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I spammed like thirty shows in like three weeks or something stupid. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So, Rolando, you've uh, I've left I've, us in I've the had dark the here. Time. I've had the time to think. You've had the uh, time. All right, you're ready. Um. I, know. I mean, clearly, I haven't. If I've been thinking about it this long, nothing has left a good first impression on me. (laughs) No, but (laughs) I think it's just, there's a lot of shows that I do like the first episodes of, but I'm going to choose one and it's not going to be Violet Evergarden, even though I keep talking about that show so much. I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, Macross Delta. And the sole reason why I'm going to say Macross Delta is because episode one the first episode of it actually came out before the actual series started airing. It was kind of like a teaser. And um, that, I hadn't really watched Macross um, unt- except for like the first one. Was it the first one? It was like when Robotech was, because Robotech is the same thing. It was just like the English version. But like the original, like I had only seen a few episodes of it back in college because one of my friends was like, oh man, it's great. And I saw the first episode of Macross Delta before like the whole series proper aired and the the way it goes and then they like implement singing in the show a lot. So like the ending song for that episode is like one of like the big songs in the show that's like really catchy. And I was like, wow. This was a very good first episode. So, <clears throat> right on. My um, my pick is uh the first episode of Psycho Pass. Um, mm, good show. Because I watched that mm, first tasty. episode and was hooked, and then watched the entire series very quickly. It is a very good show. Really enjoyable. I recommend it. Um, I think it's a lot of fun to watch. I like it though because the first episode you get plot, you get action, you get. Lots of cool stuff. So it's not kind of, you know, who voices the main uh, character boring. there, Rolando? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I know. 
the goddess. <laughs> I know it's Hanazana Kawa. Or, <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say her name. No one can say her name. It's fine. Hanizawa Kana. <laughs> the goddess. Okay, hand, um, okay, hand emoji. Okay, hand emoji. I don't have any clue who you're talking about. So yeah, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> she voices. She voices. Uh, what's her name in um, a place further than the universe? The girl with the long hair. The tall one? Yeah. Sure. Oh, really? Yes. She, yeah. She, the, oh, is that her name? Antarctica crazy girl. Right. Uh, the one whose mom is yeah. uh, in Antarctica. Shirase. Yeah, that's her name. Is it Shirase? Yeah. She voices Shuriyashi? Nautico yes. and Monogatari. She voices... <clears throat> Drew needs to watch A Place Further Than I the Universe. I, I will he never, hasn't even watched an episode. Watch he's never going to watch even, that show. He hasn't even, he hasn't even seen the past the first episode. It. He hasn't seen past the first. He hasn't episode. even watched. Alec is Alec is gonna episode, Alec is gonna Alec is gonna suffer through. Yeah. How many episodes of Monogatari for this podcast? I'll, I will have to suffer through a hundred episodes hates of that series. Monogatari. I'll have to <laughs> suffer through it to enjoy it. It'll be great suffering to enjoy. Yeah, it. You watched Just the like entirety of King's Game, and I don't know how you did that. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know how because you it was so meme tastic. <laughs> oh my god, you guys don't understand. Go back and listen to the episode where I explain how it went, and you will understand. No, like, you need to no. watch Darling in the Franks. That is meme tastic. Oh, that is man. just full of memes. She, love live she meme-tastic. got her spine destroyed by a chainsaw <laughs> and then picks it up, turns it on, and slits a guy's throat with a chainsaw with a destroyed spine. All right, well, have you, nothing about, beats I that. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I've read seen, you a I've seen another. In the Franks. I've seen another. I feel myself I know going what deeper inside part. you. It's like, <laughs> that is all. <laughs> Sorry, Rolando. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Christ. geez. Um, okay. So memes aside, uh, memes let's go. Aside. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this up here. Um, keep a lookout right now. Uh, Rolando and I just recorded a a Violet Evergarden shot recently, so that's up and out. It is um, not so, out yet. Oh, it's it's not out yet. It is in it's the, recorded by the, time, by the maybe by the time this is out. Yes. May yeah like. Keep a lookout for it by the time this one's out. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, there will be an Ancient Magus Bride shots coming eventually. Um, and then I also wanted to see if we had decided on the segment for watching that old show, the name, because I noticed our social media manager never put out a, a, a poll. No. He never put out a, a poll. poll. Oh, um, no. Oh, damn so him. Even though he promised to. Oh, I, I will no. put my vote in. You'll put your vote? Yeah. What were the choices? Okay, so there's Libation 2.0. You cannot rewatch. And then there is Don't Call It Old Fashioned, which was in quotes. Uh, and then the last one was... Um, it's like my little my, rewatch or something. It was like... Uh, my, my little series, my little can't, series be. can't be this rewatched. I think it was the last one. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Do we want to vote now, or do we want to wait and hope our social media manager puts up a poll? I mean, let, I mean, we can let <laughs> our just vote. Can just vote right now. Then let yeah, let's poll just do go it too. That's true. That is true. All right, Drew, Rolando, or Drew. Okay, I like to rewatch Drew, one go. because I like even go in. <clears throat> the last one? No, the the first one. No, the. Oh, the first one. Oh, God, I'm getting them all mixed up now. <laughs> Fuck, man. All right. Rolando, what's your choice? <laughs> the last one. <laughs> Mark, what's your choice? <laughs> um, I don't know. Probably the last one. It's it's pretty funny. I'm good. I'm good with the last one too. I like that. I like both those. I I don't like the. I'm good with all of them all right, because well. I made all of them up. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm gonna. I was gonna say the last one right, as well. well we'll um, so we're going with the last one. All right. We have a name. Um, Let's watch. Monogatari, just a couple boys. more. Yeah, we're watching. I, I do think that Monogatari would be a good pick for that segment. It's, it's, so. it's, there's a lot to talk about, so <clears throat> I, I will I watch think it. it. I think it'll be good for that. Can we fit it into spring? We'll find out. I don't know. We'll find out. Got a lot of good anime. <laughs> find <laughs> out next time on Dragon Ball Z. The real question what, is, 
are you guys going to like Hanukawa? And the question and the answer is no. The answer so. is no. <laughs> no, no. I'm not going to like any of it. I'm going to suffer, guys. It's literally going to be my eyes are going to bleed and I'm going to have torture. Like it's torture. You, anyway, you guys will find that the best um, girl is actually a boy. And so it's fine. <laughs> Oh, just like um, uh, just, it's there's a no traps. There's no traps. It's just <laughs> Kaiki is the best girl, but he's also best a gr- best girl. He's also um, a grown man. Is the the brother sister? From, there's no brother sisters in Mario Tower. No, no, from the from fuck. What was the show we just watched? Yeah, are you thinking of Last Astolfo? I just, it, no. the Emoto side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Emoto show that we can't yeah. remember the name of ever. Yeah, the one that Even Drew last week thought that good. Ashley was Alice in yeah. Madness Bride. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have one more note. Um, March comes in like a lion. Is going to come in like a lion on in March. So keep a lookout. Oh, for oh it. is it? Um, it, it, <laughs> see it what shot. I did there, guys? You see it what shot. I did there? Oh man. Um, so there were delays because of Winter Olympics, is what they said. So. The or Winter Olympics days. are Shaft. in Japan, though. Shaft is always yeah. on its own schedule. Like, oh, just, wait, wait, no, yeah. no, no. But they do hire animators in Korea, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So they've got Winter Olympics uh, delays. So March comes in like a lion is uh, coming, coming in back March. in March. It's coming like we a got, lion. Coming in, in yeah, like yeah. a lion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have one more note here. Goblin Hunter anime adaptation. I don't, I don't know who wrote this. Yeah, Goblin Hunter. Or I think it's Goblin oh, Slayer. Mark. I don't know. What the there was like two that? different sites that said Goblin Slayer, or Goblin Hunter. But uh, it's a it's a manga right now that's pretty interesting. Uh, it's not one of those isekai like genres, um, and it's uh, got like a pretty serious tone to it. Like it's very very graphic. So. Should be a pretty good show, I think. It's, uh, it was they just announced a anime ad- adaptation for later this year, so uh, right on. be on the lookout for that one. I'm definitely gonna be watching it. It's only got like twenty something chapters of the manga right now, <clears throat> but it's pretty cool. Speaking right on. Speaking of adaptations, last episode, Mark, you said that Kaguya wants to be confessed he was getting an anime. You were believing a April Fool's joke. No way, really? I looked it up. Oh, it was shit. something that someone posted on April Fool's. Oh, shit. God <laughs> damn it. Mark getting Mark trolled, getting trolled oh, by the shit. internet. Get memed. Oh, man. Fire. Our social media manager can't even handle social media. No. Jeez. Oh, God. And he has a degree in it. What are we going to oh. do? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so I just want to say thanks, everybody, for watching. Or listen, if you want more of our content, go ahead and check us out at WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. Uh, you can also get updates from our excellent social media manager at Twitter, animeondraft, at animeondraft. Um, and then we have an Instagram, and it's an absurdly long name that I don't remember. The official anime on draft. The, the official. official anime on draft. And there's underscores between everything, right? Yes. Ye- yeah, so good luck with that. Um, and then we also have SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Just search for Anime on Draft and you'll find our stuff all there. Um, we should we- be up to date on YouTube, except for this episode. So, uh, you know, yeah. with that, thanks for listening again to episode 42. And uh, we've enjoyed having you chill with us. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.